Why do we address this? I want to go to the next one. I want to give you a framework for a conference like this and what we're doing. And I'm going to give you some of the values of Christian wokeness. Christian wokeness is uh, five things, if you will. Number one, it begins with the spiritual component. That is Ephesians chapter five, uh, verse 14. Let me let me open up and I, I want to read that Ephesians five, 14 says this. Uh, For anything that becomes visible by light, therefore it says, awake, O sleeper, and rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Okay, so this idea of being a being woke, a wokeness for the Christian has to start with regeneration. If you begin anywhere in regeneration, we're talking about being saved or being born again. If you begin anywhere other than regeneration, then then it's going to become just social and you'll miss the gospel component. So when we talk about woke Christian, uh, that, that's how we're phrasing it. But our Christian identity precedes our woke identity. But in, in, in essence, the two are intertwined. So wokeness has to begin with being woke spiritually when God wakes you up from your spiritual death and gives you life. All right. The second point is that it is personal. If you read verse uh, 15, look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise and walk is therefore how you live. So wokeness, number number one, being awakened spiritually by the Holy Spirit, whom whom draws us to himself based on John chapter six, verse 44. The spirit draws us. But then there's a personal component where there's authentic transformation taking place in your life. Thirdly, it is relational. That's Matthew 25. So people try to label it a social gospel, but we're not looking to get saved as we engage in these social issues. We do social issues because we are saved. That's the difference. So it's not a social gospel. We're not seeking salvation by saying we're coming against social injustice and we want to empower certain people that are dealing with systemic issues. We're saying in light of what Christ said, he said you're supposed to care about the poor. You're supposed to care about the widow and you're supposed to care about the oppressed. These are Jesus's words. The fourth thing, it is social. It is social. Tons of verses talk about caring for the oppressed and actually engaging in social issues based on faith in God. So faith in God, we know what it says without, I'm sorry, faith without works is what? Dead. So there's this element to where our faith drives us to action. And then fifthly, uh, wokeness is what we call eschatological. That's a big $10 word. That means this idea of the end times. And then if you read First Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 6 through 10, he talks about the fact that you were spiritually awake, regeneration makes you, makes, keeps you spiritually awake for when he returns. And when he returns, he's looking for people who actually did what they said, did what he told us to do based on faith in him. So those are the five components with scriptures next to them for Christian wokeness. Just in case you think, man, what this got to do with the Bible, everything, everything that because he awakens us spiritually, Christians are supposed to be woke. That's why he uses the term sleep. Because death is temporary for the believer, but then now we see spiritually what's going on. Are you with me? 